Yeah, nice to have you here. My pleasure. Uh, as a globally recognized um, youth leader, uh, is change gaining the evolution amongst Nigerian youths? I mean, that really goes without saying. Young people are very, very involved now. They, okay. they are very, very connected. And the ones that are, not co that are not connected are being influenced by those that are connected. So I would say yes, without a question, it is. Okay. But we, we can do much better. Um, we don't have a consensus in terms of the Nigeria that we want. And I think that needs to be the next level. But in terms of our voice, no question. We have a voice now. Okay. Talking about Nigeria that we want, do you think Nigerians are getting the leaders they deserve? Every society really and truly gets leaders they deserve, especially societies where they choose those leaders. Whether the process in Nigeria allows for them to really choose who they want, whether the context, e.g. poverty makes it difficult for people to choose their leaders, whether the context allows for them to choose those leaders is a different thing entirely. But when Nigerians really and truly decide that this is what they want, they will get it. So Nigerians are responsible for the leadership that we have in Nigeria, no question. Whatever has to happen is a decision that Nigerians have to make. Nobody from outside of this country is going to make that decision. So it's our responsibility. We decide our leaders, one way or the other. But at a time when it appears we, we are making so much noise on social media and nobody is listening, how do Nigerians make this decision that we are talking about? I don't know about whether because, nobody is Because, I mean, is, to complain on social media is not enough. Yeah, of course. To make all the noise is not enough. Of course. So, how do we make the lawmakers, those who take decisions for, for the rest of us, how do we force their hand? That's, that's a, that's a good violence. one. That's a good one. How do we force their hands? Yeah. Politicians are like business people. Business people respond to profits. Politicians respond to the response to the possibility of being elected or not being elected. And we've seen it happen over the last two elections because really and truly our numbers and our votes do count. Yeah. So the people have to find a way to show people that, look, in a particular state in this country, in just concluded election, they actually elected someone that you could see that this person in a previous position was practically corrupt. So you must have been a very, very bad governor that the people decided they don't want to, they want another person, right? So. It's, it's Nigeria's situation is not an either or, it's not an AB, it's not a binary situation. It is contextual. And when you want to have these conversations, you have to put everything in that mix. Because too many times, we want to have binary conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, we are speaking on social media, nothing is happening. Who told you speaking on social media will make something happen? But speaking on social media contributes to making something, something happening. But ultimately, you have to find a way to go vote. Uh, maybe before you even vote, you have to find a way to actually speak to your people so that you guys can actually have a consensus on who you're voting. But too many times, we're not strategic. We're very, very noisy. Noise is good sometimes. We're very, very angry. Anger is good sometimes, but we're not strategic enough in terms of the way forward, in terms of how we want to achieve it. And the other thing that has to be said is that we, we care really, but too many times we also care about things that in the long run don't really matter. What, what conversations should we be having now, for instance? We're having conversations about who won, who didn't win. In my opinion, the conversation we should be having now is about electoral reforms. Because, look, that's what affects us much more going forward. Who won, who didn't win, wh whoever would spend four, eight years and it's over. But electoral reforms would have a much bigger impact on generations yet unborn and also the generation that is currently alive. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll hold it there. We'll, we'll, we'll go check in. Let me see what my correspondents are cooking. Uh, we'll, we'll be back and we'll continue this beautiful conversation with Jaffet. Don't even go anywhere. It's still the other news. Yeah, um, while the correspondents are standing by to unleash what they have for the week, uh, my conversation with Jaffet will continue. Uh, Jaffet, yeah. Um, looking at um, the country, you are an advocate of uh, restructuring and not, you, not too young to run. But there's this confusion about people understand uh, restructuring in so many different ways. What aspect of our lives do you want restructured? For me, restructuring means that we need to devolve power. We need to have a Nigeria that, you know, if an earthquake happens in Abuja, mm -hmm. 
the farther you go away from Abuja, the less the effect of the earthquake. Yep. Right? Yes. But if an earthquake happens in the six regions of Nigeria, it would impact Nigeria. So the point I'm trying to make is we need to create an earthquake of change and development across Nigeria, whereby all the regions are, are strong. And if possible, make up Abuja weak or not as strong as it is. We, 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 we've lived in Nigeria where the, 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 the prime minister actually sent his deputy to be prime minister in Lagos. And he stayed over in the north as leader, as, as, as leader of the northern region mm -hmm. because the prime minister didn't have, the prime minister of the country didn't have as much powers. It was, power was resided in the regions. And really, I think that Nigeria's best chance going forward is to find a way to actually have a truly federal system. So we have a federal republic of Nigeria, but it's just a name only. If I was having, if, if I was in an assembly of the people of Nigeria, I don't mean national assembly, you know, a real people assembly. Primary issue, definitely we'll have electoral reforms. Electoral reforms that would include independent candidacy, for instance, that would include making it impossible for some tiny parties to just come and say they want to be run for president just so that they can endorse some people. It's issues like that. True federalism. So we need to determine those issues. The truth of the matter is, the politicians will react to those issues, but it has to be on the front burner. If we don't do that, the politicians will determine what is on the front burner. It's not good for the country that politicians are the ones leading the conversation. The people have to be the ones leading the conversation. Brexit is a very good example. Whilst they're having those debates in the, in the House of Commons in Westminster, the people are also making sure that they want their voices to be heard. And they are just as part of the conversation and the narrative as, as the Prime Minister and all, all the other members of the House. Uh, should these social media influencers who are also activists on the side of the people, should they for some kind of close relationship with government officials, you know, because some people say you're, you're too close to El Rufai. <laughs> uh, so in the light of the mm. Charlie Boy saga uh, yeah. and trying to trade talent for money and all that, so one minute you're an activist, next minute you're working for government, you know, should that relationship exist where influencers are... So it's a, it, the answer, of course, is two-sided. I have to address my side and I address the general issue. Yeah. I, I met El Rufai. We became friends about four years before he became governor, right? But he's been in politics. I, I need to make then. that point. We but did, he has been in politics. We didn't become friends with him as a first of all politician. I, I, I can't decide that because somebody is a politician, I, he won't be my friend, right? If, if, I, if I share the person's values and I feel... I can learn from the person. I'm the person's friend, whether the person is a politician or not, one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we did not become friends because he's a governor. We became friends long before he even, in fact, when we were, when we were close, really close, before, after I became governor, I mean, you have to, I, well, I have he, to step back, he's been right? A, but when we he's were- He's been a big, big time politician yeah, before he I became governor. I already made the point, okay. right? I made the point that the fact no, that he's a politician mm. does not mean I can't be his friend. Yeah, because to start with, mm. our friendship wasn't transactional. Okay. Our friendship is still not transactional. Okay. In fact, if I was an average Nigerian, I should be mad at him. Because every time somebody sees me, they have an expectation that I, I'm probably making some money from him. I've, not been, I've been to Kaduna maybe twice in the last two years to attend the meeting of Kashim Ibrahim Fellows. When he appointed me, I was surprised because I don't have any expectations from every, anyone, whether politician or my father. Okay. I do my own thing. So when I got an appointment, I was surprised. But that appointment, mm. that appointment, comes without any pay mm -hmm. and we were the, the members of the board were the ones that decided that we don't want to be paid as members of that board and the two times i've been in that state over the last two years but the reason why i said if i was an average nigerian i should be angry is because even some nigerians that i respect that i feel like they are a bit different they will see me and they will say how is kaduna mm -hmm. because they have an expectation but I don't have a transactional relationship with him as governor. If he were president today, if I don't have a transactional relationship with him. That's Thank it. you very much, Jafet.